Hey everybody, welcome to JY Dog Channel. I really appreciate everybody's comments from the last video and all the likes and uh, new subscribers I, I got. I'm going to try to continue to grow this channel and, and give you guys some good information and go down to the comments and uh, read everybody's suggestion. There's a lot of good information down there and I'm going to take some advantage of some of it myself. Today's episode is going to be about what I should have probably built instead of a Vox camper. This is great for two people or a single person that lived, you know, could live full time in it. But for three people, it's getting a little cramped. My son's growing up and he's getting a little bit bigger. I'm going to show you what I probably should have built. I almost pulled the trigger on one. It was a, uh, a 2000 Conaline E350 Vantera a turtle top. I'm just going to show you a little bit about it and the reason that I would, I would make a different choice now versus the choice I have right now. I'm going to stick with what I've got and uh, make, the, make the best of it, but I know that this vehicle might be better for a family of three versus um, this vehicle being better for two or one, one person. Uh, hopefully you guys will have some suggestions because I'm right in the middle of the gray water tank doing the install, fixing some uh, hot water for this. I finally uh, have an idea for the hot water. Since my uh, heat exchanger did not work out, I'm gonna go the route with a on-demand system and I'm actually gonna use propane, yep. I did say it, I'm gonna actually use propane. It's the most efficient thing for boondocking. It uh, gives you the best results. The thing I was worried about is having propane inside the uh, vehicle with me. I, I just don't like that idea at all. So my idea now is to run the propane on the outside of the vehicle and uh, have my hot water heater on the outside, which runs into different problems also because then you have to worry about you know it freezing, but I'm not really in a climate that I'm gonna have to worry about that so much. And I don't plan on, uh, you know, staying in a climate below freezing too often. So I'll make precautions for that, but uh, my idea now is to go with propane and keep it external from the vehicle and I'll show you uh, what I plan to do about it. My number one reason for wanting to go with the Vantera body style is that the rear is built like a bus and it's built to government standards for rollover protection. And if you have three people, one of us has to ride in the back and I'd like to have this extra protection for my family. Otherwise, I'd stick with the box camper and uh, both individuals can ride up front and uh, be protected. So that's my number one reason for wanting to make this choice. Besides having a few extra feet would be nice. Here it is, guys. This is the Craigslist find that I missed out on. <laughs> Deal of a century. It's uh, 60,000 miles, um, $5,800, 5.4 liter engine, um, nice interior. Uh, just missed it by like a day. Guy put a deposit on it and came and picked it up over the weekend. So, anyway, that was right in my backyard, too. I thought it was meant to be, but I guess not. There is one that's on eBay right now, and it's a 2005 model that's, I think, in Colorado. It has four-wheel drive already on it. Um, I know from talking to the guy that it's reserve set at $8,500, so I believe it'll sell at that. And uh, it's a pretty nice vehicle. It could use some paint. Um, it's got a lot higher miles than the other vehicle had on it. I think it's about around 138000 something like that. But um, it'll probably go for more than $8,500 with the four-wheel drive built into it. Um, unfortunately, it's way out in Colorado, and it's not meant for me. Otherwise, I'd probably go take a look at it. Anyway, these things can come out really nice. So if you look at this one um, used for uh, public transportation at Yellowstone Park, uh, you can see it was built to handle most anything. That would be ideal. Getting back on it here. Um, trying to get the shower done, get my water set. I don't have any ideas what I'm gonna do for hot water yet. But I'm gonna get all the plumbing done and get the, I'm gonna go with this tank and I'm gonna give it a try. Uh, it's gonna hang down a little bit low, but um, overall it fits well and it holds, I think it's 26 gallons. So that's that's pretty good size and I, I've already paid the money for it. so. I'm going to go ahead and mount it and uh, get it under there. And uh, if I don't end up liking I might modify it and, you know, make the valve a little bit lower. If the valve was turned around and mounted in this area right here, it would be perfect. But it's not, so uh, I'm going to make the best of what I got.
I got the front part of the tank mount figured out. The back part didn't work out because uh, I didn't have anything to mount the screws to. So I ended up getting this piece of steel out of the scrapyard and I'm going to cut it up and make a little mount out of it and then weld it to the frame so that it has like a little slot to uh, plug into. Hopefully that's the way it's going to work anyway. Yeah, I don't know what I would have done without this thing. Too. Let's go inside. Well, I bought this uh, apparatus here. It's a bulkhead fitting and a one inch barb fitting. Went up my, uh, my sink drain. Anyway, I don't know how I'm going to make this work because I've only got like an inch of clearance between the top. And if I put this bulkhead in here, it's going to end up being way more than an inch. I mean, just the turn of that way more than an inch so this idea may not work out unless I put it on the side like that maybe here's the seal I bought it's gonna go in the tank it'll uh, hopefully go in there I'm hoping that hole is gonna be the right size it's a little bit better than I thought it would. Now this is going to be difficult to get in here. Maybe, maybe not. So here's the bottom part of my drain. Should go right in this hole. Make a nice seal right there. Here's a good deal I got from Amazon. I had a coupon and the whole thing. I think it was ended up costing me, I think, $28, something like that. Um, anyway, it's drain hose. It's 15 foot and it's the Rhino. Yeah, it's made by Rhino. Camco, I think is, anyway, 28 bucks and it's a <clears throat> 15 footer. Now I just gotta find something to hold it. And this is kind of like the uh, de facto standard, I think, that uh, most people buy. I'm going to try to finally mount that tank and, um, and get it installed. Um, I did make a change, though. But I think I'm just going to put a straight connection through there and the drain straight up through the floor instead of having it go off to the side. I don't know why I was thinking when I originally did that. So uh, it's hindsight. Hopefully uh, it'll land just right. Okay, so here's a recap because I think this thing's about to go up here and stay up here. Here's my drain for the shower, my drain for the sink. There's my mount in the back to hold the rear, and I've got a piece of angle iron that goes across here that I'm about to put up there. What do you guys think? 
got a piece of steel holding it up front here. All the way across. I don't think it's going to fall out. I just need to tighten everything down. Make it secure. Probably should put some padding back here, but that's pretty tight. Like if it rubs or something, I don't know if it'll rub a hole through it or what. <sighs> so as you can see, this will be my sink drain, and that will be my shower drain. Should fit right in here. Perfect. That is just going to fit. Could have used a little, a few more threads on there, but I think that'll be fine since I used some lock nuts on it. I've got padding, and this thing is secure. It's not going anywhere. i got to figure out where to uh, mount the uh, hose at now. I'm thinking I'm going to put a tube right here, but I don't know what that's going to look like. Probably look like crap. Well, where else could I put it? Could make it so it swings out, maybe. Problem is, I bought that 15 foot uh, that hose. <laughs> it requires like 40 something inches or 50 inches, 50 inches worth of pipe to uh, put it in. I should have, I should have got a 10 inch probably. That would have been plenty. Or 10 foot. I don't know what I'm talking about. 10 foot. Oh, anyway, tank is mounted. Now I have to solve my hot water problem. And, um, you know, I was all worried about the way that was going to look under there, but actually I think it fits pretty well. And, um, tolerances are a little close, but I don't, I couldn't have put a bigger tank under here. And that's, I got enough room right there. That's not going to hit. It shouldn't hit anyway. We'll find out after the first bump I hit. <laughs> right here, I'm, I plan on mounting the, is it Eco Temp? I think it's L7 on-demand hot water system so I have the hot water system right here the vent will uh, it'll vent out the top um, water lines will have to go through right here and then travel down the inside of the vehicle to my shower like I was saying uh, 20 pound um, just a regular you know um, grill so it's easily refillable I can just take it anywhere and just pick up another cylinder uh, 20 gallon We'll go right here and eat up you know some of my space in here but i think the benefits all weigh it uh i will probably take the dual fuel um camp stove out and get a propane stove and have a uh quick connect somewhere along this line right here for uh for propane and just run the line out to uh either my little cooktop here or, or something like that i don't know hadn't thought that far ahead i did think about putting the uh Hot water propane unit right here but I think the the, the heat will kind of mess up the paint on the side right here I, I'd have to put some kind of stainless steel or something on the side but um, yeah I'm at the uh, the point where I have to decide on hot water and I got a good deal on the uh, on-demand system and I finally talked myself into propane because oh I uh, plan on for heat for this thing i've been studying uh since i'm going with propane now a propex heater they make a uh i think it's a 2011 something heater that goes actually and mounts underneath the vehicle and um all of the propane connections producing heat and everything are you know on the bottom of the vehicle and only you know hot air goes into the vehicle it's not the most efficient heater but um it's supposed to be quiet and um you can run on propane without the risk. Oh, get this. Glad I saw that before I uh, sat down there. Got a hornet's nest. Or wasp nest. I don't know what, what I got going on here. I guess it's wasp. Get out of here before I get stung. Hey, thanks for watching my channel. If you haven't subscribed already, uh, please do for future updates. Remember, build it, don't buy it.